Think of a time where you were near a lake, watching the sunrise or the sun setting on the horizon. A time where trees surround you and the lake calls your name as the sun shines on the glimmering water, and the hills present some of the most breathtaking views one can imagine. When we drive, we drive to get away. From the buildings, the gridlock traffic, the impurity of the air that the Twin Cities contain. The cities hold a few too many bright lights, noisy trains, and just more than that. You find the city skyline to be a little too gray and dull because it's time for a change. A change into a more natural landscape. So, we drive with the intent of filling our weekend trips with pure natural landscape. In Minnesota, that place is called Up North. Tourists travel here from across the nation to come to the great outdoors of the Boundary Waters Canoe Area, just north of Ely, Minnesota. But today, this is all at risk. If the North Met's copper nickel mining plans get passed by the government, which is being influenced by Polymet Mining Corporation, then we're doomed. A main component for cell phones, solar panels, and wind turbines, copper seems to be a beneficial economic resource, but with a high risk for hazardous waste contamination and destruction of native hunting and harvesting. Many environmental groups question if the costs of production outweigh the benefits of production. Save the Boundary Waters is one environmental group working towards saving the natural beauty that has thousands of families, campers, and students experiencing every year. And they raise the question, what happens before, during, and after the mining production? The Boundary Waters is about a 1.1 million acre playground that houses more than 1,000 famously pure lakes, as stated by Pearson. But where is this area, you may ask? The place where Polymet wants to put a toxic waste production destroy destruction area is the Boundary Waters. And this is America's most visited wilderness, says one organization. A little background into the situation is copper nickel mining has been known to exist in the northern region of the state of Minnesota since the 1800s, but it wasn't until 2008 that multiple mining companies wanted to get permits to start extracting the minerals of northern Minnesota. And these minerals are specifically copper, nickel, and what the mining companies like to say, precious metals. By using the word precious, they like to make it sound like these metals are good or can't do any harm. But thanks to their false advertising, not many know that these precious metal metals cause most of the harm. By pulling them out of the ground, they create toxic pollution. And right at the heart of the BWCA. And as most of us know, a heart has many veins, and those veins come in contact with the entire body. And in this case, the entire body is the entire northwestern part of Minnesota that holds lakes, rivers, and streams. And as stated by Friends of the Boundary Waters Wilderness, when sulfide ore, the body containing the precious metals, or its waste, is exposed to air and moisture, it generates sulfuric acid. If you know anything about sulfuric acid, you know that this can create a toxic sludge, other known as acid mine drainage. And that will contaminate the surrounding lakes, rivers, and groundwaters, as brought up in the article on sulfide mining. Next, I will be describing the final environmental impact statement, as well as a few of the most recent activities involved around the problems, to help further stress the concerns of this environmental issue in detail. The government of Minnesota got together in October of 2015 to sign the completion of the final environmental impact statement. The completion of this document intended to outline the potential impacts of the North Met Mining Project and Land Exchange, which was released in November of 2015. An overview of this document was signed off by high-ranking officials from the members of the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources, U.S. Forest Service, and U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. The good thing about the signing of this document was that the fact that the state of Minnesota was following the Minnesota Environmental Pro Policy Act by enforcing its rules and regulations. And now I'll go into the main proposed solutions of this document, which outlines what the government proclaims will protect the environment. The first issue is that mining would result in ore rock and waste rock. Waste rock is supposed to have a low potential for chemical reaction during storage, while ore rock has a high chance of reacting. 
The document stated that the North Met would be responsible for disposing of these rocks subaqueously in the mined pits, which means disposal would take place underwater within the mines. And from an environmentalist point of view, waste rock and ore rock, regardless of their chemical level, could produce pollution as outlined in the threats on the boundary waters. Issue two is transportation of the ore by an upgraded railway. Transportation of mineral through the wilderness make environmentalists think what a perfect potential way to pollute the landscape surrounding via train spills and noise production. This is the same idea that the BWCA does not allow motorized vehicles in certain places within the canoeing zones. Issue three is processing or tailing waste, which is environmental impact statement saying that Polymet will upgrade its existing tailing basin, but it's very easily for these basins to fail, resulting in a huge impact on the environment. Issue three, and something called hydrometallurgic residue waste would be placed in a new double-lined hydrometallurgic residue facility, but if these wastes aren't properly monitored and contain contained, rainfall into the waste create toxic Toxins and leakings into the seepings of the groundwater is very, very possible, and therefore very easily harming the health of surrounding ecosystems as well as human health, seeping into the ground below, making its way into the groundwater supply below, or contaminating drinking and swimming water for those thousands of tourists every year. One example of this pollution is that still has a lasting impact today is the Jiangxing province of China's river. This is a clear example of open pit mines, which created cancer villages. And cancer villages are areas of people segregated and have lots of cases of cancer due to the airborne toxins and water contamination of this open pit mine nearby, as well as crop destruction from the metal pollution. Some of the last issues are that the water that comes in contact with the mining zones or equipment in the containment systems and are treated off-site, but when and how long will it sit there, environments, environmentalists may ask. The last point I'll make is the fact that this mining is scheduled to take place in Minnesota's superior national forest of the National Forest System, and this can harm the native land and will create irreversible damage. And the land that is lost to the mine is said to be swapped out with land of equal value, which could be seen as an okay trade-off, but Polymet has a past with tribal concern. Moving along to the positive acts of change throughout an intervention done by Amy and Dave Freeman. They spent an entire year into the wilderness. As National Geographic named the Freemans Adventures of the Year in 2014 for the completion of their three-year, 11,700-mile 11, paddle and dog sled journey across North America, Dave and Amy now said that they are going to take on a 365 days in the wilderness to create a mission to showcase the Boundary Water's beauty before it may become irreversibly polluted. They are doing so by the documentation of their travels via Instagram and a film called Bear Witness. Another thing that's being done is the Friends of the BWCA and Save the Boundary Waters took part in many rallies to take a statement on this environmental issue as well. In Minneapolis, a rally took place in 2015 when the Department of Natural Resources began reviewing internal drafts of the final mine plan, stated the uptake journalist. And the goal of this intervention was to walk through the city and bring signed petitions to the DNR stating that they wanted hopeful change for these mine productions. One of the most recent documents submitted in this environmental issue is when Polymet submitted their air quality application to Minnesota's pollution control agencies. And for them, it marks another step forward in the North Met project for North Metro Project, and for myself and the environmental agencies, this is just another upset to our hard work and devotion to stopping this act from happening. But the reality behind this permit being submitted is that the Polymet President and CEO, John Cherry, said that he will meet air quality standards to protect the environment. 
Well, this brings up another idea to control project emissions. This is an entirely new project problem that contributes towards the global greenhouse gas emissions. And this project was contribute to nearly the entire economic sectors of the global greenhouse gas emissions. And these are specifically copper mining, which would contribute to the greenhouse gas sections of industry, electricity, heat and production, transportation, buildings, and forest land use, releasing CO2 into the atmosphere. And copper mining is known to release toxic atmospheric chemicals of sulfuric acids, which is mainly harmful to human health. Nearly all of the natural photos used in this presentation today were of my own experiences in the great up north. And beca because this topic is one of my greatest passions, therefore I would consider myself an environmentalist on the polymet mining of the Northmet project. The last thing I want to emphasize was stated by John Lurie, professor of experiential learning at the U. He said that nature is more than just a beautiful natural picture. It also serves to benefit anyone going through a rough time, whether that is mental health or a long day at work. And trips into the outdoors provide a deep-rooted connecting web between de-stressing, prevention, or mental health and the environment. So, if you feel inclined, to give the government a piece of your mind. Then, as stated by the final environmental impact statement, you are able to send in your public comments to be a part of the official files held by the state government on this project. And I encourage you to do so because change is in the hands of the people that care and the people that want to make a difference. The natural environment of the BWCA could be annihilated and transformed from a natural sanctuary into a natural wasteland if we, the citizens, don't take a stance. And I hope you realize that these lakes should be saved because the benefits of the wildlife and natural landscape within the BWCA of the Superior National Forest 100% outweigh the benefits of creating an irreversible damage. As Sigurd F. Wilson proclaimed, this is the most beautiful lake country on the continent, and we can afford to cherish and protect it. Thank you.